Hi everybody, I'm Sandy Alemian. And I'm Cindy Alemian Rice. And we are sisters. And today we wanted to come on here and share with you um, some of our love of food stories and also share why Cindy has created this amazing company called Mediterranean Mezikits, why she created it and what it is. And so, yay, here we are. I'm so excited. So our love of food started early on. Early on. Early on, when we were children, mm -hmm. growing up, cooking right alongside our mother and grandmothers, and we learned how to make everything from scratch. So we're Armenian, 100% Armenian. And so, yeah, both of our, our, our grandmothers, mm -hmm. both of them, mm -hmm. had this intense love. And I think maybe that's true in our culture. Like food was, food was everything. Like everything centered around food. Um, our gatherings were all about food. Like not just a little food, you guys. Like <laughs> massive quantities had to be. <laughs> and we just we love talking about food. And Kenny jokes with everybody. Like, okay, when you get to know Sandy, you'll realize she talks about food a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do. what's wrong with that? I thought everybody did, but not everybody is like that. Some people eat to live. Some what? people live to eat. What? I know there are Some people, people like eat that. to live. What's that? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Why? I don't know. But didn't you just tell me you think Daddy ate to yeah. live? Because some nights yeah. for supper he wasn't hungry. He'd say, "I'll just have cornflakes." Corn flakes. What? I know. But he was happy. I know. He ate what he liked. So food was food was everything. Like that's that's just you know. So even with Grandma, go ahead. You want to share the story then? So yeah. So <laughs> we lived practically right next door to my grandmother, and she was. Always cooking, I guess, although I honestly never saw her cook. <laughs> but like, whenever we went up there to visit, she'd say, come into the piazza. I'll give Suckers. you some food to, to, <laughs> to take home. So her piazza was like this little breezeway that she had in her house. It was always really cold in there, kind of like it a It was cold. I don't know yeah. why, even in the summer. It was like a refrigerator room. <laughs> so she had a refrigerator in there and just like tables filled with pots of food pots of stews and things with lamb and beans and potatoes and always covered with a thick layer of orange fat that you know is normal when you're cooking meats but so she would just like scoop out these meats and vegetables and with her hands with her hands and bouncy ball and meatballs with her and they were clean hands i'm sure, I'm sure they were. although i never saw her wash her hands either but that's okay she had an apron and she probably wiped her hands but anyway yeah we survived so we'd go down the hill with our little pot of food and she fed the whole family, yeah. nieces and nephews, and she was wonderful. Well, so, Cindy, so speaking of grandma, the, the smells, right? Yeah. So when I go into any place, anybody's home, any restaurant, if I smell fried onions, I'm immediately like seven years old back in my grandmother's house because that's, that's what her house always, to me, that's what her house yeah. always smelled like. And, and, or and smoke. the wood <laughs> smoke from the wood fire that she always had burning in the dining room because... <laughs> <laughs> she would she would invite our family up to our house to have shish kebab, which is like, you know, beef or lamb on a skewer. And she, and she would cook these meats right in her fireplace that was in the middle of her dining room. A wood with, fireplace. A wood fireplace. So she'd throw wood on the fireplace. The fire would be blazing. She'd put all of the meats in this grate that you, with a long handle that you'd turn over. And she would have like kidney lamb chops and pork chops and steak and hamburgers all in this thing with the sparks flying all over the place or oriental rugs all over the floor and, and I would say grandma isn't this house going to catch on fire and she'd say no it's not because it's fine it'll be fine just sit down and then the food would be ready and we'd sit in the table in the dining room and we'd eat right there oh my it was great she was she was I call her a pioneer woman she, she was, was like strong was. and st strong Strong woman. Yeah. Yeah. And so our other grandmother, Sadie Mummy, our mom's mom, she was all about food. Yes. And she had a different style. So Sadie Mummy was more dainty and she was always singing as she, she cooked was. and she had the radio going on the background. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. I do like old songs like Mazzy Dotes and Dozy Dotes. <laughs> remember those? I don't remember that. Mazzy Dotes and Dozy <laughs> Anyway, that was Sadie Mummy. And she cooked pastry. She cooked everything too, but she cooked different kinds of things. And I remember going to her house on a set Sunday morning after a half an hour drive from our house. And I was always a little car sick when I <laughs> poor Cindy's car Well, sick. wait, wait, wait. Because there were five of us, plus my parents, in a station wagon 
both of them were smoking oh, <laughs> in gosh. the car, right? So we'd be piled in the back of the station wagon. By the time we got to Saturn Mommy's house, I was green. And we were greeted by the smells of her cooking eggs um, and bustama from my grandfather. Granddaddy loved mm, bustama, which was like this, it's like a fermented smoked meat that was covered with a thick layer of orange paste like cumin and garlic and tomatoes and she would make it and dry it and then she'd cook it with his eggs and it had like a very pungent smell which i'm not crazy about but that was that was his thing he loved it but she made like special cookies kurabia mm. white powdered sugar cookies and you know the recipes are just so special to us and so then our mom our mom mommy was the best cook ever so she had a family of seven total she made dinner every single night homemade from scratch every single night and she loved it so she would bring us into the kitchen like i remember i remember times oh, it's like cry. Oh. when she would make this thing called sobadegi and it, and it had little cubes of lamb and garlic and egg and we would all sit around it the us girls would sit mm -hmm. around the table and break up the little pasta into little bite little pieces and stuff and that was just like i remember it such awesome fun memories with mommy and food yeah it was like a ritual it was a ritual and it was an exercise that we did together cooking yeah. was fun yeah and then we all got to eat it so fast but um it it was wonderful and it taught us some great yeah. life skills she actually created a cookbook of all of her favorite recipes and most of them were armenian recipes and she was the cutest thing she had written like little notes in there like daddy liked this and grandma never used to put this spice in there but i do and the way she measured things was so cute. And she would leave out some directions sometimes. <laughs> like she would forget to put in the main ingredient, like rice. Oh, I forgot to put rice in there, but that's all right, you know. So, so we grew up with an intense, intense love of food and love of cooking. And so, Cindy, your, your whole life has been around... My passion, is, my passion yeah. is cooking and food like all of us. Yeah. Um, I went to school for public health, so I have a public health food safety background, but then I did go into catering yep. and I had a brownie company. It was um, amazing. An International brownies. Yep. It was gourmet brownies she shipped all over the world. Yeah. And then I um, had a couple of small little cafes yep. and then went into food safety um, teaching, consulting full time for the last uh, 15, 20 years or so. And most recently, my creation has I been Mediterranean Meza kits. Love it, love Again, love it's food it, related, it. but it also brings in our culture. So it's tell them, to, yeah, tell them why. Why did you start this? So I started um, making these kits um, mainly for my sons, first of all, because um, they live in different parts of the country. And this one Christmas, I went to the mail them churik, which are these Armenian braided rolls that which are, we have. It's a staple. It's 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 a staple. It's a staple. Every, every family party is not complete unless you have chud eggs right. and cheese and olives to go with it. But anyway, so I wanted to mail them chud eggs, but knowing that they would get stale and, you know, and root to them. So I decided to make these little chud egg kits. And so I pre-measured the flour and the yeast and the different ingredients and the spices that go inside of it. And I put it in a package, shipped it Brilliant. so that they could make Brilliant. it on their own. And I also made similar kits for all of my sisters that year and um, all of my nieces and nephews and they come out just like the real thing, right? The ingredients are simple because everything's pre-measured. Pre -measured. Um, and so then I figured, well, if I could do that for chud egg and it tastes pretty authentic um, and easy to make, so easy. I'll do it for other foods. And that's what I did. I made a kit. So this is the, this happens to be the chada kit. It looks like just one little brown bag, right? Inside are three packets of ingredients. So easy. Simple instructions so are on the easy. back. And we have videos on the website. And it doesn't get stale. It doesn't get stale, which is really important to me being mm -hmm. a food safety person. So if you get this package or any of our other kits, you don't have to make it right away. It's now have about 15 different Armenian specialty dishes or Mediterranean lentil soup and a few other ones. Because each kit requires one ingredient from your pantry, whether it's a quarter of a cup of olive oil or a pound of hamburger to make the stuff vegetables. But all the other seasoning and ingredients are there for you. So one thing about being Armenian, like I know for me, anytime I meet someone who's either Armenian or Lebanese or Mediterranean or Syrian or Albanian, or like, and it's like this instant like, Oh, family, you're my family. So are you finding that it's only Mediterranean people that are ordering these or? So these kits are for everyone, whether you 
um, are familiar with Mediterranean or Armenian foods or not. Um, they're easy to make. Mediterranean flavors are much more popular nowadays anyways, right? There are lots love. of restaurants popping up and people love them, but they're um, making some of these foods can be daunting. Yeah. They don't know where to get the grape leaves. They yeah. don't know where to get the spice. They don't live near an Armenian store in Watertown like we do. They can't just run out and get the ingredients. So these have the ingredients for everybody that wants them wherever they are in the country. So what Cindy and I are going to be doing, because again, I love food so much and I love talking about it. I love cooking. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating more videos where we're going to be talking about one of the, the foods that we grew up with that she's created a kit around and then we're going to go into the kitchen and we're going to cook it. I'm so excited because we'll get be to fun. demonstrate how to do everything. Like you might get a kit of the Yalanchi, which is the stuffed grape leaves, but you might not know how to roll the grape leaves. So we're going to make it from, we're going to make it using the kit. We're going to show you how to roll. We're going to show you how to form certain cookies. Every, every week be we'll fun. be demonstrating another technique, which is just as important as getting the ingredients. Together. And we're going to be sharing more food stories because that's what we do. And we'll be eating. eating. And we'll be eating too. Yeah, I think so. Cool. So thanks so much for joining in. Um, yeah. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Two, there's two skulls. So in Armenians, there's Armenians and then there's Oydad, which <laughs> is a crazy sounding term for meaning not <laughs> Armenian. All right. A lovely. I'm married to an Oydad. I love him to death. I'm dating an Oydad. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Oydad's everybody. <laughs> loves Oydad's everywhere. No, 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 no. All right. So. No. Do you want me to start over? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my dads. Oh. <laughs> this is awesome so far. Yeah, wow, we're awesome. Who did we forget? So speaking of that and speaking of memories, do you remember going up to Grandma's house? She would always have stale Fritos. <laughs> would you remember stale that? Like Fritos? <laughs> I don't remember. Stale corn chips. Hi everybody, I'm Sandy Lenian. And I'm Cindy Alini and Rice. Yes, we have sisters. Sisters! <laughs> Let's not do that again. <laughs>